I know Basil uh, mentioned that he couldn't attend today. Um, there was some outstanding questions in that poll request. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, right here. So uh, I got um, I got all the uh, just I guess an update. I got everything. Um, well, what's everything? I've got um, um, the C bomb support ported over to um, XML and to Protobuf. So that work is complete. It is both of those other serialization formats are now feature parity with uh, with JSON. Um, let's see. The um, pull request is here. Um, I've made a few minor changes here and there, just so you're aware. Um, for example, a lot of the enums that we use in Cyclone throughout the rest of the specification uh, do not use um, lowered camel case. They just use um, minus signs between the words. Mm -hmm. For example, operating system is operating dash system, right? So yeah. for, for all the enums, right, in, in EBOM, I just align them to that particular syntax standard that we established early on um few minor other things like actually enforcing the date where we expect an iso 8601 date right mm -hmm. um and a few minor documentation changes um, i incorporated all the documentation that you uh, that you submitted earlier in that uh in that one json file that you shared uh, all that has been incorporated into the documentation at this point. All the documentation is is fairly good. Uh, there's no t leftover to dos or anything like that. So um, we're we're in pretty good shape actually. Um, test cases have also been um, have also been uh, created. Um, I created a very simple one that. Um, well, I'll, I'll just show you. Um, I created a very simple test case that um, that's all the protobuf stuff, protobuf. Um, yeah, here's just a very, very simple test case where, you know, we've got one cryptographic asset, um, we've got a library, and we got some data. And um, I just created this, you know, the application depends on the library, the library implements the algorithm, um, and then the library protects the data, right? Pretty, yep. pretty straightforward. Um, really cool. Yeah, so, um, so here's the, oh, here's the application, there's the, there's the algorithm, there's the library, there's the data. So pretty uh -huh. self-explanatory. Yep. I also created another test case that then use uses every single field of the CBOM specification with just, you know, dummy data, right? It's not like uh -huh. a real example. So that's also in there. Um, it might be too large to actually just, no, I guess it is displaying. <laughs> so this is, this is, no, that's actually the, that's the XML version of that same test case. Yeah, here's the dummy one, right? So I'm just throwing stuff in there. So I'm, I've got algorithm properties, I've got the certificate properties, I've got protocol properties, and I'm stressing uh, related crypto material properties. Yep. So with just dummy data, whatever. Um, hmm. So all that is done. And again, all those test cases are for JSON, XML, and, and protobuf. Um, there were a few outstanding questions that I had Um, I 
should we change protected by to protects so that the dependency relationship goes the same direction as uses and implements? For example, and, and I throw an example here. Just kind of read through that real quick. Yeah, no, that that makes sense. Um, but I also agree with what you wrote there that it doesn't feel really natural. But I think from the structural point of view, it absolutely makes sense to to have one one dependency direction or flow. Okay, so if I change this to, um, it, it, so this last one right here. Instead of some data protected by crypto library, if we change it, it would read crypto library protects some data. Yep. Um, yes. I just thinking about what would be the kind of default or um, yeah the the case where. You know, just thinking about when the default case, uh, is it more like from the data perspective or from the library perspective? So do I have normally when I have an C bomb or an, an S bomb, do I have normally their data structure and then I want to explain how it is protected or do I normally have some crypto library that I detected and then I want to- well, this is, Yeah, this is really about the, the this is really about the, dependency relationships, not necessarily the data. For example, we could have another dependency relationship that says, you know, this, um, um, you know, this service uses this library, and we could also say it implements um, um, this algorithm. And that algorithm being, you know, TLS or protocol TLS, for example. Yeah. yeah. You know, or, that, that, that makes sense. I was just thinking about what would be the, so if we have this crypto library as, as the first node, when you look at the dependency graph, usually from the use case perspective, or if it would be one of the last points, um, like do we have the data before we actually understand or want to add the crypto library just from the use case perspective? I know that in this structure, we can reflect mm -hmm. both, but just from the use case, what would be the common one? But I, I actually don't have a clue what I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I mean, the common way to represent that is, um, you know, if, if I if I were to perform a threat model, right, mm -hmm. and if I were to do like a classic data flow diagram where I'm um, capturing all of my assets mm -hmm. on that diagram, my actors, my data flow, uh, and that sort of thing, I would, um, one wouldn't, one would normally or naturally say, well, I've got this asset and I need to protect it. How am mm -hmm. I doing that? Um, yep. is, is generally how you would, would, would model that. Um, so from a, from a use case perspective in terms of like actually using this data, like as humans, um, we would we, we would ask the question, how is this data being protected? Mm -hmm. So protected by actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, I just, it, I don't know. Um, maybe so, it's my... Uh, yes, this, this type is going to be a optional or is going to be required? Like, this, the... It's optional, but it defaults to users because that's what the current definition states so i mean even if they don't use type it is always users right like in the yes. current mm -hmm. yeah so the the meaning of the dependency relationship will not change in one six but you'll mm -hmm. have these these other ways to express that dependency relationship i was also thinking about the other use case i was talking about discussing in the group like about the you know test use case or i don't know runtime and think can we express that through types or uh... no 
Now, this is really about how how deeply coupled is this really, and what is the action that it particularly does in the context of that dependency relationship. So, for example, when we get to one seven, one seven, we're introducing a bunch of um, um, uh, more architectural type patterns. So we're introducing this concept called blueprints, which kind of um, allows us to capture what the application actually does. So think UML, but a couple levels of abstraction higher. Um, we could theoretically capture use cases such as, well, this application or this, this, this class in my application um, implements the factory pattern, for example, or implements um, MVC, or implements, you know, um, I don't know, the proxy pattern, right? So we can go down to that, theoretically in the future, we'll be able to go down to that gang of four, like level design patterns to really express not just the what the application does, but a little bit about how it does it. Mm -hmm. I was asking, is there any case there will be more than multiple types in the graph, like sure, X and implement, so protected by or implement, I mean. Yeah, and implements doesn't mean it uses either. Mm. Yeah, these are not the nodes, so nodes can have multiple lines between them, so. Yep. Yeah, I I I think that we really should we I think we need if we start introducing this, because I sat through a two hour session for SPDX where they went through all the new types, if you will, using our semantics for their their Rupano spec. And it was not fun. Um oh they completely messed up our types. <laughs> So, I, I told Kate the, that the other day. So, so I mean, I, I think that we need to be very clear in our definitions and create a a bar, you know, look at a larger set of use cases to create a reasonable set that can be used, you know, you know, for for the foreseeable future from if we introduce a set. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, maybe we don't decide on the types yet, on the protected by versus protects yet. I don't know. Um, I mean, why don't that's, you give some thought? That's, that's one that bothers me because it's more, I would be like more, I would want to be more precise when it comes to encodings or decodings. I, I would want to say encrypted, not protected because protected is more, is vague. So anyway. Well, yeah, it depends on what you're protecting and how you're protecting it. For example, you know, if you have a hardware key and you're protecting a laptop with that key, well, that's also something you could theoretically represent. Yeah, if it's an algorithm, though, I mean, I'd like to be as more specific in, in our in our semantic to uh, tree of tree of, or, of of types than than just yeah. Using... Well, the 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 encryption like what, what the actual algorithm does, that's captured elsewhere in the crypto properties. So the fact that something encrypts or decrypts, that's already captured. There's no reason to capture that in the dependency relationship. It would, it would literally be duplicate yeah. effort, duplicate data. Sure. Um, so yeah, I mean, what, what, what are your thoughts, then, uh, Nicholas, on protected by? Um, so actually, from a use case perspective, I'm for the protected by, um, at least that I, yep. from the use case perspective, as I can think of. Um, but the, what, what I'm still missing to have a good opinion to that is um, how it would work on a on a computer side. So when, for example, dependency track tries to fetch all those dependencies, is there now a use case where it has to like implement some different parsing because the um, the order is different because of the dependency type and if that should be the case or like those those kind of things that I'm missing if, if there's an impact on that side. But 
yeah if it's not then i'm yeah okay. i don't think it's going to be overly i mean it's it'll be a minor change in terms of logic but you know it's not going to be a big deal it's it's really not okay yeah um all right yeah, no, I, I, so I'm not, I don't, I just want to say one last thing. I, I've heard two, a defense of protected by and Nicholas saying, I like protected by, but I'm saying that to me, that's to me, when I hear protect, it's an active uh, verb, an active concept. Um, because I think of like uh, the kernel device, uh, things like uh, we install on machines to actively monitor and protect, protect things, an active thing. Versus encryption is once and done. It's something that's happened in the past. It's not going to. It's it's something that happened. Um, it's not an act of protection. That's I guess that's my. Yeah. We need. I mean, in my mind, there's to be a differentiation there. Well, I mean, again, I would love to see the 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 domain of of types that were proposing oh it's just these three uses implements protected by that's it that's all we have that is absolutely it because there's no re reason again there's no reason to have what the thing does because we're capturing that in the crypto properties itself yeah i, so, I, think, I think that's it is we'll regret having that be too abstract of a term for something that's static one and done versus active protection, which is being can be done by a monitoring service or a kernel device driver on a computer or or whatever, or a sensor on a on a machine. Well, in some cases it would be in some cases it would be active. In some cases it would have already happened in the past. Right. If I've got data that's protected by a library, right, maybe maybe the thing is already encrypted. Uh, versus, you know, I've got a um, maybe a um, data in transit that I'm actually describing in my dependency relationship, and that's protected by TLS, so that's more of an active thing. I don't see it in, in terms of telling a story, like, you know, a person picks up stick and you know and and breaks open a whatever um it's not the crypto algorithm in my mind doesn't actively i don't I, joe does not you know joe protect is an act is an active thing he that we protect something you know it might be if, if you can point to a, a a domain of terms where that makes sense relative to, to cryptography um rather than the general sense I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll drop the subject. What, what, what do you guys use in the IBM CBOM spec? Um, we just used users and implements, no protected by. No protected by? Yeah, it was, I think, uh, one outcome of our working group meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that. So maybe we have to come up with a different word. Um, I think there's a whole, I mean, in my mind, in, you know, it, you, even though it sounds redundant, I'd like to love to cogitate about that more. <laughs> that is that, that data is already covered. I'm, if I'm looking at this from a graph perspective and I'm just walking the notes of a graph and maybe it's not called crypto library, it's just called foo and it's, it's obfuscated and, 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 uh, you know, just if I just look at the graphs and the nodes and just the types, without going actually having to introspect the nodes themselves, the, the metadata on the nodes, it'd be nice to know just looking at the graph and the, and the graph types, the 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 connector types, what's happening, to get a sense of things. You know, that's my perspective. Um, it just maybe one understanding question: Is there a reason why the types have to be an enum and not just an arbitrary string? Is there any logic that parses such things and does have to make sure that there's only those three things? Or could it just be domain-specific edge naming that is just for, I don't know, for other tools to parse? Yeah, it's going to introduce a bunch of complexities if we do that. 
Yeah, it, it's okay. basically, goes back to, I think what I was just saying though, there needs to be a set of, it's like learning a language or if, if somebody wants to inspect the graph and I want to see, like, I, like I said, if I just look at the, like I have 10,000 nodes and, you know, 50,000 vectors connecting them or lines connecting them. And I want to look at a, 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 you know, some, some dependency part of the graph and all I can see are the, you know, I, I, at, at first, if I, if I were to render it, I might see the names of the nodes, right? maybe their types. Um, but I also see, I would see the types of the vectors, the lines connecting them. And I would love to make sense of the relationships. This is basically, this is a relationship. So relationships should, should be a small, small set, um, and very carefully expanded. Uh, so we don't get into, I mean, I think we're getting, you know, if you, it might actually be interesting to, just to, to review what, what the, what, um, SPX has done, cause they've gone off into the weeds a little bit, um, to see where things can go awry. Um, but you know, things like, you know, they, they spend a lot of time on packages and archives and groupings and things like that. Um, but in terms of security, I think, you know, creating a, a intelligent, uh, you know, you know, something that implements speaks to me because if you're a programmer or a developer or a designer, you know what implements means, um, encrypted, if you're just straightforward to me, this has been encrypted by something else. Um, yeah, but if I, if I don't go into the metadata of the node, I don't know that, you know, maybe what, you know, what, you know, maybe there's a crypto library that is protected by, but I, maybe it has, you know, some other feature that protect, that protects it or, you know, what, what differentiates, maybe I have three things protecting a piece of software. Maybe I have, it's been encrypted. So it's protected by that. Maybe I have, when it's installed, it's protected by some, some, uh, some, uh, signature, that's been where it's been, you know, packaged or after post installation, uh, you know, there's, or there's, there's have an active kernel device driver that monitors to make sure it's not tampered with. So, so protected by is, is too generic, too generic. And, and like I said, it's, it's an action verb to me. So that's just going back to my poor example. I keep harping on apologies. Hmm. Oh, we may have to come up with another word then, um, Nicholas, uh, to be able to capture this. Because if we get rid of this, we're going to get rid of a bunch of use cases, mm. um, which I don't want to do. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, well, we had uh, already, I guess, some discussions around different words um, there. But yeah, I think we you can do another round if it makes okay. sense. I think what would right. help is I don't know if you have some um some I don't know some examples or other use cases. I mean, maybe not specific ones, but like a set of example S forms or example S form use cases where we could just have a look into and look if a word makes sense in the crypto domain and in that domain. I don't know. No. Okay. No, I mean encryption is just one minor thing that protected by could do. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think we started from secured by, um, because we had yeah, something we like that in, in the IBM spec, but oh, we already right. went and, in. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. You had like a secured by, but it was up in the crypto properties, wasn't it? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. 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 Then we went to protected by because it was a little bit more generic. But right. yeah, <laughs> then stopped there. <laughs> um, but yeah, maybe another iteration is not not a bad thing. Okay. All right. Um All right. Um, I guess we'll move on then. Uh, certification level. Um, I'm assuming this should be an array so that we can capture multiple certifications. Yep, agree. Um, okay. Yeah. 
I guess maybe we should ask Basil just to verify if that could be the case, but I think that it is the case that one hardware or one, I don't know, uh, component can have multiple certification and certification levels, but yeah. Yeah. I think that's the case. Yeah, because I, you know, I think you can be like, um, um, uh, what's the, what's the, well, FIPS, and then you could also be, um, what's the other one that we're capturing in there? Um, the European or most of the, the co co commons, um, what was it called? Common criteria. Common criteria. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I need more caffeine. Yeah. I mean, you could theoretically have an application that does both. Right. So, um, okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll go ahead and make that an array. I, I thought as much, but you know, um, I'll make that change. And then just for consistency's sake, uh, we've got these two things, and they're basically strings that you know uh, for for references elsewhere in the bomb. But then we have this other field that actually has ref in its name. How should we make these things consistent? Should we add a ref to the end of here? Or should we drop the ref here? I just I like I like these three things to be consistent if possible. Yeah, I like the uh the similarity with bomb ref to to you know make it visually um yeah, I don't know that, that the people just see that there is a bomb ref expected by having this ref at the end. Um but yeah, that's just my point of view, so we could add it to the others too, if it makes sense. Okay, so add ref to subject public key and signature algorithm. Yeah, from my point of view, that would make sense. All right. All right, I'll go ahead and do that. And then I'll change this, the certification level to be an array. And so last last question. So you've when you talked about FIPS, you you triggered something in my brain. Mm -hmm. So there's the concept of like FIPS certified versus FIPS compliant. So would compliancy also be listed using the same field or array or array of fields? Mm. I don't know. Um, I don't think so. So just yeah. certification. Yeah, I think it's just certifications. Um, I was wondering about algorithms as, you know, in the space of quantum or whatever, if new algorithms come out, um, you might be compliant at a certain point in time before you get certified. Um, I don't know. And in addition, compliancy also, I, I think, indicates that you've implemented a certified thing, um, but you've added extra bells and secret sauce to it. Right. So, you know, so, you know, so, so how, how do you claim those things, I guess, those, you know, those in between states or whatever. Yeah, I don't think we're capturing that today. Um, yeah. It's a good point. Is that only a FIPS thing or is that, uh, does that apply to common criteria as well? I think it happens in any domain where you have certification. Well, like we have this in OpenSSF, <laughs> where people claim to be salsa, com you know, com compliant, even because we don't have a certification system. And people, you know, so, um, anyways, yeah. Or the certification has not been developed yet. I mean, an algorithm can come out, people can start implementing it and become quite popular before, you know, before, you know and, and out of manufacturing products before the certification's done on the product, right? So, so let's see. Well, in the case of Salsa, you wouldn't use anything like this. You would use attestations. In, in I was sense. using the, the, the differences between compliance and certification, okay. that, okay. that this, those two states exist, that certification. Because people, that's the that's the worry is that all these companies come out com complain, you know, uh, you know, basically not complain that they can, they claim um, compliance to some specification, but there is no means to certify. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, right now we're just capturing the certification. Um, I mean, the compliance, theoretically, that should be handled by Cyclone VX attestations anyway. Um, True. Because you True. are making claims and you need to provide True. evidence for that. Excellent point. Excellent um, point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Um, so let's just work on the uh, the protect protected by, secured by, whatever we want to do, Nicholas. Um, let Basel know kind of the output of this conversation, if you could. Yes, um, we'll do. So other than that, other than that one thing, this is this is ready to be approved by the core working group at this point. So um, let's let's try to finalize that that word choice in the next week if we can. And uh, that way, I can get this in front of um, of TC fifty four during the um, uh, the next well, not today's meeting, but the the one after today, yep. which will be like the January twenty something or other. Yeah, that makes makes sense. Okay. Cool. Um, let's see anything else in here. <clears throat> There was a, uh, let's see, there was a question in the um, Slack channel. Did you get a chance to read that? Um, just a couple of minutes before the call. Yeah, read yeah it. from Michael Kleiman. Yep. Um, Yeah, so I mean the TLS stuff. I mean we're we're already capturing that. Yep. Um, I mean we're not capturing the grades and stuff that SSL test obviously outputs. Um, that's you know outside the scope of the spec, but um, time sampling. I mean we already capture uh, RNGs, right? But time sampling, what? I mean that could mean a lot of different things, but do you, do you know what specifically he 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 means by that? No clue actually, but Basel seems to understood what he meant. Okay. You can express time sampling as well using protected by relationships to crypto assets. Okay. I mean, we have those timestamps um, in the related crypto material properties, but I, right. yeah, I don't know if he, if that's the thing he's talking about. Maybe there was um, um, there was one comment from uh, one of the maintainers in Cyclone DX. Uh, in terms of like the dates that we're capturing, and these are specific to, um, uh, let's see, where do we have this? This is on the, is this on the certificate properties? I, I don't know, but he's he's wanting to capture not before and not after, so that we're distinguishing between usage and validity. Okay. So Basel had a question here, but um, it it kind of like oh, it's only been five hours, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if there's a use case for that, that makes sense. I mean, we try to capture most of the properties that are um, part of key management. Um, mm -hmm. So created, updated, and something like that. But we didn't include all, so maybe this is one of those that we're missing. So yeah, we can definitely add that. Yeah, because let's see, we've got um, yeah, so not valid before, not valid after. Mm -hmm. That's for and... certificate, and then for the other, we have more. Right. Um. 
Well, I'm not seeing any more. Do we have any, any dates? I know we do hmm. somewhere in here. Yeah, for the um, related proof to materials so the last one of your examples. Oh, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. Creation yeah. date, activation date, update date, expiration date. That's actually related to this NIST um, standard that describes the state of keys. Uh, I don't know, there's a standard for that and they describe those four states and then we put those in here. Right, right, right. Okay. Okay. Now we still have the secured by in here. So this related crypto, this is a private key that's secured by an HSM. All right. Okay. And then you could bomb ref to that. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's give, uh, I think the, um, if we can get clarification on that, uh, that timestamp question. And then the most important thing is the protected or secured by whatever we want to call it or something else. Yep. Um, if we can, if we can come to some kind of, um, consensus by, um, by our next CBOM meeting, I think we'll be in really good shape. Is it, yep. I mean, other than that, it's, it, this it's, it's all done. Yep. So that sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, question for you. Um, how's the, Changing topics topics a little bit. Um, has is there any update on the uh, the IBM work with uh, Miter in terms of quantum? Um, yeah. Um, I mean, we we had a couple of workshops um, before Christmas. I was not attending regularly, but uh, the last one I was I was there, and um, they the idea is now to kind of. Um, write kind of a white paper, what we want to achieve with this working group and um, also putting CBOM in there and um, covering also other uh, other parts of the strategy. So from IBM research perspective, we want to influence it in the direction that uh, it should be very tightly coupled with software supply chain security. So this whole SBOM concept and stuff. And um, yeah, so that should also be reflected in the white paper. I already had some uh, document there and want to share it as a base with the group. So hopefully um, the other people of the group align with this idea and then this should be at some day published. I don't know actually when we will start maybe the next working group meeting, but yeah, I think it will take some iterations. Okay, no, that's fine. I uh, appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I think the final thing um, that we need to do or we can start doing it now is uh, updating some of the documentation uh, mm -hmm. I know there's some existing documentation over on the uh, the IBM CBOM repo. Um, yeah. Some of that needs to be updated to reflect the current state of the, the schema. And then uh, we need to start writing the guide for how we would actually do this. Um, so in terms of like capturing the use cases and how to represent these stuff, uh, the stuff in, in Cyclone DX, et cetera. So if we can start working on that, uh, that would be absolutely fantastic. I would love to be able to, when we when we release one point six, which will probably be in the um, toward the end of March, would be my guess. Um, mm -hmm. When we release one point six, um, I'd like to um, simultaneously re. Uh, release a guide on CBOM. Yeah. I already have multiple um, commercial vendors coming to me wanting to support CBOM um, fairly, fairly soon. So um, uh, folks seem to, to, to find either some value in that or using mm -hmm. it as a differentiator. Right. Mm. Yeah. So, um, so I think if we come up with a guide upon release, it would be almost immediately useful 
by some pretty big name vendors. So, uh, yep. as well as obviously all the consumers of that as well. So, um, so let's try to work on that as well. Um, I'm uh, I'm trying to finish up the uh, we're going to try to finish up the the attestation guide because we're also shipping uh, attestations with 1.6. Uh, so we're actively working on a guide there. So with the release of one of the six, we're, we're really hoping for two brand new guides to also be delivered. Um, let's see. Um, anything that you wanted to bring up today, Nicholas? Um, yes, there's one one small thing, but uh, I would like to do it off record. It's fine for you. Okay, sure, 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 sure. Um, Vinod, um, um, uh, Matt, did you have anything? No, nothing at all. Okay. All right. Well, let's uh, let's conclude this part of the meeting. Uh, I think we've made a lot of progress. Uh, Nicholas, thank you so much for all your contributions, man. You've been Absolutely fantastic. Uh, again, pass that on to Basel as well when you talk to him. And uh, I will uh, go ahead and uh, conclude this conclude this meeting right now and uh, talk to you soon. Let's see, stop the recording.